Welcome, everybody, to our very first stream on the Dungeons and Dagons channel. Today, we are starting a brand new campaign with Remy as the Dungeon Master and yours truly as a mere player. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, everyone, we are live. Oh, solid. Hooray. Huzzah. Hi, peoples. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the first session of the secondary D&D campaign on Dungeons and Dagons. I am your DM for the night, Remy, Remster, Rem, or if you're feeling formal, Remington. With me tonight, I have Dale. Hello there. I have Kitty. And I have M2. <laughs> good nothing, my friends. <laughs> How is everybody today? Can't complain, can't complain, I excited, excited nervous. to play for once. <laughs> <laughs> giving him a ten, giving him a day off for five minutes. Yeah. It will be it will be very good to DM you guys. Yes. I'm just I'm just here to get my fix. I'm <laughs> yeah, just here to get your fix. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well um I would now like to take a short minute to just issue a quick disclaimer. Uh, we here at Dungeons and Dagons do not support violence, drug use, uh, drinking, driving, racism, lying, cheating, or stealing, even though some of these things may happen frequently throughout the campaign. This is a fantasy, fantasy setting, and what happens during these sessions have no effect on our real lives. Thank you, and look after each other, please. Now, without further ado, let's get into the first session of The Forgotten Tales. Okay. So, uh, this camp, you are in the Forgotten Realms, uh, in Faerun along the Sword Coast. Um, you guys know this setting reasonably yeah. well, I presume, um, seeing as we just finished a campaign in it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, another one next week as well. Yes, <laughs> which we cannot wait for. Ugh, all, the day day. Day. Oh, it's <laughs> all the day. Um, this adventure finds uh, the three of you uh, traveling along a road towards Green Rest. Um, for the past several days, uh, two of you have been travelling a road that winds lazily across the rolling grasslands of the green fields. Um, on the morning of the last day of your trip, uh, Rivain and Namia, or Namia, sorry if I pronounced Namia. that wrong. Namia. Um, you woke up with the caravan master. Um, and you found a furry figure sitting next to the uh, embers of the campfire. Uh, this ended up actually being a tabaxi, and all you could get from him was that he wanted to head to Green Rest. And after confirming that you guys were heading to Green Rest, he actually uh, got onto the wagon of the merchant and promptly fell asleep. And shrugging your shoulders... Uh, you decided, well, no harm, no foul. You're going to be there by the end of the day. You can find out what happens if, you, if and when he wakes up. So you continued on your journey. I just <laughs> shrug my shoulders, reach into my coat, uh, pull out a roll of tobacco, light it, and just take a puff, just contemplating it for a second, and then get back to business. I take a nap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um... On this final day, sundown is approaching when you top a rise and see the town of Greenest, just a few short miles away. But instead of the pleasant, welcoming town you expected, you see columns of black smoke rising from burning buildings, running figures that are a little more than dots at this distance, and a dark winged shape reeling low over the keep that rises above the centre of the town. It seems that Greenest is being attacked by a dragon. I look over at 
the other two. And is the, is our tabaxi friend away? Well, that depends. Have you woken him on your journey? Because I, I just reach over and nudge him with the tip of my foot, and then point yeah. to the town ahead. Just to say, just immediately sits bolt right up like nothing, like he was never asleep in the first place. But mm, no, I am awake. It. Hmm. It smells like barbecue. Hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, that's that is not good. <laughs> I turn to that was adorable. <laughs> yeah, that's that is that is my voice for my lovely Tabaxi for this campaign. So I hope you enjoy this. I, I just shrug and I turn to Narnia and I say, "What do you make of it?" I want to hit it. I take a puff of my I'm, I'm gonna smack it good <laughs> I take a puff of my tobacco and then I reach into my coat and slowly withdraw my short sword and I say hmm, I had a feeling we would run into something like this well let us not waste any time okay I am going to bring up the map of greenest and would one of you like to roll a D3 in Discord, which will determine which road you actually enter from? Um, Mr. Uh, Normal, I was going to say, Dale, uh, since you actually get to be a player this time, you can go first. Okay, a two. Uh, if that is up, Looks like it's I up. hope the screen is up. It yep. is indeed. Yep. There we go. Uh, that is, you are actually entering from the west. Ah, the west. Now I'll just get the... I was going to say, while, while we're setting this up, do we want to take a second to like actually introduce our characters? So I was going to introduce your characters at the start of combat, when it is your turn. Yep, understood sir. That yep. makes sense. Uh, that is on the wrong layer. And sorry, everybody watching, uh, you'll have to forgive my slight incompetence with the maps. Technology does not always agree with me. It's not incompetence. We're, we're all learning stuff as we go. Under attack. I'll grab us some nice music. Uh, yes, oh, please. please do, sir. Okay. What, what's the name of the campaign again? Uh, Horde of the Dragons. Horde of the... Well, actually, no, we're running Tyranny of Dragons, which combines both I of them together. Tyranny of Dragons. Yes. The Tyranny of Dragons uh, omnibus, which has the two campaigns put in one book. Yes. Now, I'll just zoom in slightly. Okay. So, you guys... Uh, how do you enter the town? Would you like to just uh, barge in, or would you like to sneak in, or how do you wish to do this? Hmm. I look at the others to gauge their opinions. I mean, I am pretty good when it comes to being quiet. I sort of glance over at the Goliath going, I'm not sure this would work for everyone, though. So, I am fine either way. I look at the Goliath <laughs> at Narmia and I just say, mm, not sure where you learned your uh, crafts, but where I come from, we say discretion is the best part of valor. <laughs> I'm eight foot. Um, it... It's up to you guys. I'll, I can try to stealth if we need to stealth. I can't guarantee anything, though. I just kind of go, hmm, throw my uh, tobacco roll on the ground to crush it, mm. and then I would like to roll stealth to just stay out of sight and sort of walk ahead. 
Okay. Um, okay, roll for stuff. And let me know what you got. I might do the same. You're, you're free to just waltz on in if you'd rather, well, if you, if you feel better at just walking in. Because I'm guessing stealth isn't one of your fortes. Uh, I have a dex of plus two, so. Oh, that's not, that's not bad. Um, I got a, where am I at? Uh, oh, I got a 21 on mine. Because I actually have good stealth on this character. 15. Oh, looks like we're all doing pretty good. Okay. Um, you all, uh, crouch down low and... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just a funny visual. <laughs> good ass. Watching, like, two more guys with you just going... <laughs> Crouching <laughs> down. Still thing. Still gonna be visible behind the houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is, that is very... an interesting image. <laughs> um, so, crouching down as best as you can to try and stay out of sight. Um, you guys slowly work your way forward and you get to about the, uh, the tree just north of you, uh, yeah, to the north of you and you're, you're all crowding around it trying to see what's ahead, uh, when, uh, without warning, five humans dash out from between two buildings on your left. A limping man and three young children race across the street into more shadows, and a woman carrying a round shield and a broken spear turns and faces back in the direction from which they come, covering their retreat between the houses. Eight kobolds stream out of the alley on the family's heels and fan out around the woman, who looks determined to delay the creatures for as long as possible. One of the kobolds goes in for an attack as none of them have actually seen you because of your amazing stealthy abilities and the woman blocks the knife attack with her shield and then she raises her hand utters what seems to be a prayer and then suddenly one of the kobolds is engulfed in flames and goes down shrieking Oh. What would you guys like to do? You can wait and see how this plays out, or you can get involved. Oh, Goliath is confused. I was going to say, I mean, seven on one just hardly seems fair. Perhaps seven on four would be a better opportunity. I simply say, I simply grunt and then step out into view of the kobolds. Okay. Uh, would everybody please roll initiative? Uh, nine for me. Oh Eight. boy, I actually get nine for Ravane. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Six for Namia. I nine. actually have decent, decent initiative <laughs> at this time. No more going last for him too. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get surprise rounds as the kobolds didn't see us approach? Yes, you do. Yeah. I'm just getting everyone's uh, uh, so initiative. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, was your <laughs> what was your sorry stumbles? I missed it. Uh, 18. 18. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll just move stumbles actually up to the line so that you do know how far you have. Yep. Yep. Uh, and Stumbles, you are actually first in the initiative. Ah, what well, would you like uh, to do? Well, I, I suppose introducing myself is probably a good idea since uh, we're yeah. rolling with this now. So, uh, do you want me to do this in character or out of character? You may do it however you wish. Eh, fair enough. Well, uh, in this campaign, I will be playing Stumble, or his full name is Stumbles Over Moonlit Mountains. But to keep things simple, his name is just Stumbles. He's a tabaxi monk, so basically run fast, hit things. So uh, I'm basically going to take uh, move up to where number six is on the map. I don't actually know how far he is. Uh, yeah, that's definitely, definitely within three. your movement range. Yes, absolutely fantastic. Yep. So I will move forward. I will now remind you again. Does movement count as a bonus action? It doesn't. No, it's movement is its own, own movement. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. what I thought. Just like the check, I, I know what's fine. campaign, but 
I will take out my own uh, short sword and I will take a swing at this lovely kobold while he's uh, basically focused on the other person. Okay, please roll to hit. Thank you for numbering them. Yes, yes. that is very, very useful. <laughs> yes. uh, that's going to be a that's going to be a twenty three to hit since I'm using it as a finesse weapon. So I'm adding my dex to that. Yep, uh, that is actually wait, no twenty five. I forgot it's plus seven, not plus Ooh. five. Yeah. Uh, yes, that is definitely a hit on Kobold. I don't know. I don't know the last game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I will... Yes, coming from the last campaign to a new campaign and all the ACs... That's going to be nine points of damage. Yep. As you swing your short sword, you score a gash across the kobold's chest, separating its clavicle from its chest, killing it instantly. Nice. Nice. There you go, one down. Well, dang, I was going to say if it was still alive, I'd go and hit it again, but, um... <laughs> yeah, my, I, I don't believe I can do that now, because it is dead. <laughs> to me! First color of the campaign, I'll take that. Lovely. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that is a very prestigious achievement. Okay, uh, now, it, <laughs> now it is Ravain's turn. You see Ravain, the uh, half-elf vaguely drow looking wizard with a uh, wearing the typical wizard's garb a long billowing robe that's blowing in the wind and a big crooked hat except he's holding a short sword in his right hand not a typical weapon for a wizard all he does is survey the kobolds and the combat going on and he grunts points his hand at Kobold number one and casts a Firebolt. So that is going to be a uh, 19 to hit. That is definitely a hit. Okay. Please roll your damage. So damage, that's going to be uh, nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. The Firebolt hits the Kobold center mass and he goes up in flames, screaming, and finally falls over, not moving anymore. Also, I do have a habit of forgetting to delete the tokens, so please pick me up on that. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. That's okay, I just remembered I forgot to describe what Stumbles actually looked like. I'm just going to say he was moving too quick, and I forgot for me to do it, so we'll, we'll catch up on that later. <laughs> fair enough, there will be plenty of opportunities. Okay, now it is. I'm sorry, Kitty. Of uh, Namia. Yeah. Namia's <laughs> turn. I. I guess I'm gonna run up and hit whatever's closest. So you would like to go for Kobold number seven then? Sure. Okay. Uh, roll to hit, please. I shall. Uh, plus seven. Twenty-four. Yep, yeah, that is a hit. Please roll your damage. Uh, what was my damage? I think it was 1d8. 1d8 plus uh, five. Eleven. And uh, what weapon were you using? My yeah, battle axe. Yep. Uh, you bring the battle axe down over your head and hit the kobold, uh, nearly bisecting it into two. <laughs> um, I feel OP. <laughs> just enjoy the moment. Yes. Um, just enjoy the moment. So yes, the, uh, the Goliath woman swings the axe over her head as Kitty is playing Namia, the Goliath female. Um, that means Kobold number seven is dead. And thus ends the surprise round. Uh, it is now Stumble's turn again. Ending. All right. 
Well, I believe I will quickly dash over to number five. Number five? Try to uh, give our extra well, other person in need some cover so she's not uh, surrounded, or at least has yeah. some coverage. Yes. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to take my little short sword and I'm going to go swinging. Okay. I thought you were going to say you can poke it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to poke it. I, I, poke, <laughs> I got to poke with my sword. Poke with the sword. <laughs> okay, that's a 18 to hit. That is a hit. Please roll for damage. That's going to be a 7 this time around. 7. You once again swing your short sword, embedding it into the side of the kobold as he raises his dagger to try and deflects the attack. Uh, you hit something vital and he goes down with a gurgle. Hey. Okay. Uh, did you want to do anything else? No, I can't really use my... Uh, I was going to say I'd like to use my bonus action to hit things, but... Uh, can't really do that unless I'm directly next to him. So I'll uh, simply look back at the uh, woman and uh, just go, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, she sees you and she goes, oh, I am now, thank you. But uh, maybe we should keep the chatter to a minimum until the lizards are dead. That sounds fair. <laughs> and with that, this woman raises her hand again and casts Sacred Flame. I will bring it up in the chat. Uh, This is a cantrip. Okay, the... Now I need to make a dexterity saving roll for the Kobold, otherwise he will take full damage. He failed. And as this lady raises her hand and utters another prayer, the Kobold number four takes a large amount of damage and screams, but still manages to stay on his feet. Uh, it is now Ravain's turn. I raise my eyebrow to the woman, and then I run up to Kobold number three. And I attack it with my short sword, rolling a 13 to hit. Yes, that is a hit. Please roll for damage. I don't right. know if I'm entirely used to being able to hit things with such a low roll. It's, this is odd. <laughs> I hit it with my short sword and deal five points of damage. Five points of damage. Be- Short sword hits the kobold scales and it looks like it deals a very, very painful wound and for a moment there it looks like the kobold will stay up and continue fighting. But as he swings his sword in retaliation, he stumbles, falls to the ground and does not rise again. Lovely. Okay. And with that, it is Kobold 2's turn, and he moves up just close enough to swing at Ravain. Yep. And what is your AC? 14. And Ravain just sidesteps the dagger. I just smile. <laughs> And now it is Kobold 4's turn, and it staggers forward 
towards Ravine. And tries to swipe at him with its dagger. And hits four. Uh, four damage. Ouch. Whew. Yeah, not good. Stumped <laughs> backwards and then clutch my hand to my chest, bleeding profusely, wincing in pain. Don't die yet. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this would be very, very anticlimactic. <laughs> uh, Namia, it is your turn. Crush. Kill, destroy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will stomp towards one of the things hitting my little friend. So and two smack or four? Uh, two. Two. Yep. Okay. Yep. And roll to hit, please. Wait, which one's taken the most damage? Uh, four has taken the most damage. Okay, just two is fine. Then. Yep. Uh, D20 plus... Oh, what was my thing again? All new things! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> uh, plus seven. Twelve. <laughs> that is just a hit. Would you please Only roll just. for damage? <laughs> Imagine if it hadn't hit. <laughs> that would. Well, Cobalt's a uh, pretty slippery little guy. It's yeah, not impossible. Oh, shit. Small well, and quite dexterous. Mm. Seven. Bring your axe down, and at the last second, your grip slips, and the axe kind of flips in your hand so that you're now swinging it down with a flat face. And you completely crush the kobold skull. <laughs> Successful fumble. <laughs> Covered on the fumble. Good save. Yeah. First down. I just look around to see if anyone saw that. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. looks off to the side, pretending he didn't notice. <laughs> And with that, it is now Stumble's turn. All right, so we got just the one left who's already taken some damage. Yes. Cool. Well, I'd like to go and actually try my uh, martial arts to uh, go and uh, finish this one off. Mm -hmm. Yep. So basically, from where I am, I'd like to just do a full out like running kick, so it's like a dynamic entry sort of deal. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's going to be a just doing a normal hit plus, I think. Dex? Yeah, I can use Dex for that hex. That's going to be 17 to hit. That is a hit. Outstanding. And that's going to be 7 points of damage. You run up and jump and perform what can only be described as a perfect flying sidekick. And your foot connects with the front of his snout. Just breaking his neck instantly as his head is forced around. Oh, God, we yeah. brutalized this cabal. <laughs> <laughs> that is the end of combat. Hey, 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 good try. A cabal scales worth anything? <laughs> Probably not, to be oh. honest. Yeah. Too yeah. common. I look over at Stumble. Some of my children act as if brawn is not worth anything compared to magic. Myself, I will praise whatever gets the job done. Fair enough. We tabaxi are not particularly well versed in magic, but we will not say no to anything we can get to help. I just look at them both kind of blankly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, he looks over at. Uh, Okay, is it, how do you pronounce your name again? So it's Namia. Namia, and you just go, and you, very, very impressive. Sometimes more brawn 
is necessary, but you definitely get the job done. Mm -hmm. I look up at this tower. Thank you, little kitty. I look up at this towering figure and I just mutter under mm -hmm. my breath, perhaps there is such a thing as too much for. <laughs> Don't make me squish you. <laughs> so yeah, just briefly go, uh, I apologize for not introducing myself earlier. I was, I walked quite a long way and uh, I felt the nap was necessary. Uh, I am known as Stumbles over Moonlit Mountain. Or Stumbles is, is probably easier for you. I extend a bloodied hand from my bleeding chest <laughs> as I say, Ravain. Probably get that looked at. I'm... Wait, what? Hmm? What'd you say? Sorry, I need to turn you up a little bit. Ah, fair enough. Uh, so looking at, um... Ravain's bloody hmm, blood and everything else is going, yeah, probably you should get that look at. That is... <laughs> I, oh. I do not know what sort of weapons they have. That could actually be bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as you finish saying that, the woman walks over while constantly keeping assertive glances to the side, making sure that no more enemies are coming upon them. Uh, with the four people behind, um, one adult man, um, two young boys, and a younger, even younger girl, um, all just old enough to really run by themselves and know to follow their parents. Um, she walks up and she goes, uh, I can probably look at that for you if you'd like, as thank you for saving our bacon back there. I wince and I just simply say appreciate it. And then I lean back against the wall of the house and wait for her to do her thing. She walks up and bandages the wound. She doesn't uh, you don't she doesn't heal you for any health, but she does stop the bleeding. So I'll take so. it. <laughs> raise my hand and I say best if I take precautions and I cast mage armor on myself bringing my mm, AC okay. to 17 for the next 8 hours mm. okay very very useful. I'm just standing there being a lookout for everyone cause I'm so fucking tall <laughs> <laughs> The... Same, but uh, I was gonna say, I do the same, just, you know, obviously good eyesight, not nearly as far away though. Well, it is, uh, I forgot to mention before, uh, it is 9pm at night, the ah. sun has gone down. Uh, I outside that of, much. Yeah, outside <laughs> of town, <laughs> outside of town is very dim light because of the fires happening in town, Yes. but inside town is just, it's low light but low uh but bright enough that yeah uh goliath can still see quite adequately i keep uh side glancing the tabaxi thinking kid cat <laughs> kid cat <laughs> they probably probably wouldn't help if i uh, put this up as a picture of uh my inspiration for stumble <laughs> just obviously with just a sword and no bow and arrow but roughly the same Big <laughs> um, uh, How tall is Back at the uh, at the other people over here, going, I don't suppose your compatriots have somewhere they can lie low while while this is happening. Well, uh, it would be best if we were to head to the keep. Uh, the keep would be the best place. It was where I was trying to get my brother here, and he's children. Uh, I am uh, Lilan Swift, by the way. Uh, and who might you be? I didn't quite catch what you were saying before. A thousand pardons. I am Stumbles over Moonlit Mountain. You may just call me Stumbles for short. And I, I'm... I oh. am Ravain, and this big girl here, I gesture towards Namia, I'll stand there with my arms folded, like, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Uh, Namiya face stomper. Oh, I can't even say my own last name. 
Oh, la la, thank you, tea. <laughs> I think that goes well with my intelligence modifier. <laughs> An interesting name is uh, just maybe just Namia for for safety. Not face stomper. Or is that too threatening for a little no, tiny No, I, 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 I believe you may have earned that name so far. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely not like to tread underfoot. Mm -hmm. Tell me, ah. pretty big foot. Tell me, Linan, I say, <laughs> stepping forward. We were told that this town would be peaceful, an easy caravan guard job. Any idea where these kobolds came from, and if you happen to catch who was leading them? From everything we have seen, we've seen a couple of people uh, so far wearing purple robes, and dragons seem to be quite prominent in the decorations on their armor. Uh, these were just low-ranking I believe. I mean, I don't have much military uh, training, but I believe these were just grunts sent to find people and loot. Um, they happened across us as I was trying to get my brother and these children ready to uh, sneak to the keep, and you managed to get to us in time to stop anything bad happening to us, well, anything too bad. I have a question. Yeah. Are they mercenaries? Uh, I don't know, unfortunately. Um, uh, would I recognize them by description if they were? Uh, if they were mercenaries, you would, yes. Okay. Uh, but you do not uh, okay. recognize them. Um, I... I mutter thoughtfully purple clothes, and I look towards the keep. Yes, uh, well, if you want information, um... The best person to talk to would be Governor Nighthill, uh, and I can guarantee that he will be in the keep uh, coordinating the defenses of the town. Uh, if you could uh, help us get to the keep, uh, I know some rudimentary healing, um, and I could heal a couple of times uh, when times get very needful. Um, and I would Sounds be like very grateful. Sounds like a good <clears throat> idea to me. What do you do I'll, to me? uh, yeah, I'll pick up Ravain and carry him. <laughs> it's a, uh... Carry her. Sorry. <laughs> Ravain, Ravain, is Ravain not with. Yeah. Oh, I just realized that Lynan, <laughs> Lynan and Ravain, oh, that's going to get confusing sometimes. Ah, yeah. oh, yes, carry <laughs> Ravain, we were... We will, we will make do, but uh, I have nowhere else to be, so the keep sounds like a good place to go. Okay, well, uh, I do know the most direct route. Uh, I can't vouch for its safety, but I feel... Ooh, pardon me, sorry. Uh, I feel like uh, between the four of us, uh, we might be able to get there in relative safety. Never talk well Uh, what race is Ravain? Sorry. Oh, me? My character's a half drow. Lenan Swift is a human, I think? Okay. That's quite very cool. Lenan is a human cleric. Okay. Well, do, do you want to, do you want me to carry you, or do you want to ride on me? Because I'm so huge. <laughs> you could probably perch or something, I... if you wanted. Hint of contempt in my voice, and then I just walk ahead in the direction of an indicator. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, but if you collapse, it's not my problem. <laughs> Shrug and reach into my coat, pull out another tobacco roll, and light it, and begin smoking it. <laughs> okay, with. Okay, so you guys decide to follow Lenan's instructions, and uh, she guides you uh, eastward to a crossroad, and then uh, tells you to go south. 
Um, are you guys now still trying to be stealthy, or are you just walking down the road? I can give it a go. What is she going to do? Uh, well, Lenan will do whatever the rest of the group. Uh, she notices that you guys seem to be more capable of what you're doing. Okay. I rolled 24 on my stealth. Yep. Same. Also 24. Lovely. They're saying, it's no time, I'm a cat. This seems no, to be more for stealth. <laughs> Yay! You can stay with Lenan. <laughs> we'll back you up in case something goes wrong, or if others show up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, so stumble. What did you get? Sorry, twenty-four. Behind a bush. 24. <laughs> okay, uh, so you all start to make your way forward down the road, and as you get to the crossroads. Um, Ravain and Stumbles, you notice the figures up ahead, but, uh, not in time to warn the others who just keep walking ahead. And, um, unfortunately this time you will not get a round of uh, attack of opportunity, uh, Round of surprise, yeah, uh, sorry. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, my so bad. Could, could <laughs> everybody please roll initiative? Uh, we use different initiatives for each fight you may come across. Seven. Time. So now I we need to got... get dice. <laughs> the spot is rigged. <laughs> uh, Ravain, what did you get, sorry? Twenty. Twenty? Yep. And stumbles? Uh, it's just a 10 this time. Just a 10? That's still pretty good. Oh, yeah, no. Considering how I did last campaign, I'm not complaining. <laughs> um, as you make your way into the crossroads, uh, the, ac- the uh, cultists that are down here uh, look at uh, talking to each other across the road and discussing which house to try and loot left while the kobold is actually keeping watch and as such the kobold gets his, his turn first and he or she you are unsure uh, <laughs> runs up and tries to hit Namia. <laughs> okay. I was going to say that's uh, good luck to it. And what is your AC? 20. And hits. What? what? The hell did it roll? <laughs> it rolled a 17 and it has a plus 4 to hit. Love yeah, okay. Well, so, <laughs> looks like my fear is great. I'm honestly impressed that it went for the biggest person in the group. Like, that's. <laughs> Most kobolds uh, you think it's just one. <laughs> well, um, the your kobold is... is brave mm. tiny thing. <laughs> <laughs> brave <laughs> tiny thing, come to die. nodding, admiring the balls on this kobold. It is a brave <laughs> thing to fight in the shape of adversity. It deals three damage to Namia. Ow. Um, yes, well, this kobold is quite brave because it is backed up by th- four, uh... That, that makes sense. Cultists. That so, makes sense. Whether or not it is the fear of the cultists or the, uh, bravery inspired by these cultists may know what they're doing. He I don't thought think it I would have be any best. damage dealing, uh, reactions yet. Mm, yet, no. Not yet. They're a long way from those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that being said, it is now Ravain's turn. I throw out my hand, flinging a firebolt at cultist number four, and I rolled a 23 to hit. Uh, yes, that is a hit. Alright, let's roll the damage. That is, for damage, nine points again. The firebolt hits the cultist in his 
uh, dragon embroidered robes, and the robes catch fire, and oh. the cultist cannot get out of the robes fast enough, and you hear an agonized scream as he burns to death. Oh dear. You see Ravain's eyes glimmering what <laughs> Oh, great. Another pyro beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we found out pyro for the first time. Uh, is that all you would like to do, uh, Ravain? I would like to move into cover behind <laughs> that house to the right. Behind the house to the right? No problem. Yep. Oh, I didn't want to turn you. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's just there. Yep. That is my turn done. Okay, stumbles. Okay, if I move, move, will I take an attack of opportunity from this kobold? Ah, uh, yes. Technically, you are diagonally to uh, the fair top enough. right. In that case, you. I will quickly glance at the. Uh, uh, oh, I'm gonna get take a minute to remember character names now. Um, <laughs> Kitty, your character. Namia, no. yeah. Narnia. Okay, just go think Narnia and try and go from there. So <laughs> glance up at uh, you and go, I apologize, I'm sure you want this one, but I must interject. <laughs> and I strike at it with my sword. Okay, roll to hit, please. That's going to be a 21. That is a hit. Please roll okay. damage. Uh, how does a 9 sound? The short store pierces its chest. And you skewer its heart. Oh, he, he, without a sound, he just slides off the end of your sword. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm slightly annoyed, but I respect the little cat. <laughs> there, there, no. Um, do I want to move? Could I possibly... Eh. I don't really have any range things. I was going to say, could I possibly climb up onto the roof of one of the houses? But there's no real point in me doing that. Not unless you have I should. Attack. I do technically have some ranged weapons on me, but nothing fancy. Did I do that anyway? If you want to. Yeah, but I have to do Thank anything you. to get up there. Uh, acrobatics. Yeah, during a uh, combat encounter, yes, acrobatics. Fair enough. Fair enough. I know because I've done it so much. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you for. Uh, Okay. Um, I've got when I get uh, fifteen. Yep, that is a pass. Uh, which house would you like to be on top of? Uh, the one to the west. Up uh, on this side of the roof. Oh, Ooh, pardon me. Sorry. Oh, go. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Hey. Uh, now you've got the high ground. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would be taking the high ground now. <laughs> now it is uh, Linan's turn. And once again, she is going to cast Sacred Flame uh, on cultist number two. Uh, I need to look up her DC. Uh, and unfortunately he passes and the radiant damage misses him. Oh dear. Uh, now it is Namia's turn. I run up to number one and smack him with my axe. <laughs> okay, please <laughs> roll. <laughs> Hold this thing, they're going, yes, I will, oh my, oh, oh dear. <laughs> What a big girl! Crap! <laughs> Twelve. That is a hit, yes. Please roll for damage. Yeah, you might have to start getting dice for this. Oh, whoops. I think well, Liam just, got me some dice. I'm just using my physical dice oh. because I rarely get a chance. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. That's going to hurt. You bring down your axe, and the axe enters between the neck and the shoulder and ends somewhere between in the middle of his sternum. Oh, and then God. you 
with a wet squelching sound, rips the axe out of his chest, just leaving him. Use my foot and push him over. <laughs> <laughs> leaving a black bloody mess on the ground. You were kidding when you said you get graphic on killing people. <laughs> I'm going to get overboard shit. for the first session. Oh no, this is fine, man. Keep going. It's like the Mortal Kombat shit. I love it. I like it. <laughs> I want to send one of them flying. Oh god. I probably well, won't get to. <laughs> yeah, well, we got time. We got a whole you campaign to run through. through. This round, I'm sure. Uh, and like yeah. an under axe swing, just. <laughs> <laughs> Cultist number two, seeing you kill his best friend in the world, oh. <laughs> runs at you and tries to hit you. Yes. Uh, uh, just let me... There we go. No. Oh, my best friend, we play cards and contact rituals together. <laughs> <laughs> and as he swings his scimitar, you raise your shield and the scimitar bounces off harmlessly. It would have been hilarious if he'd not won. Hit my oh, shield God. and smacked himself in the head. <laughs> Ow! Uh, and I, will, I, I will take you down in his honor, bonk. Oh. <laughs> I took myself down. <laughs> okay, now it is cultist number three's turn, and he runs up to Linan. And tries to hit Linan. Oh. Stop the healer. Mm. Mm. And Linan brings her shield up, and the scimitar gets wedged in the uh, old wooden shield, and she just flicks it away. Hooray! Hooray right, from herself and the scimitar misses. Uh, it is now Ravain's turn. Alright, I want to climb up onto the roof of the house in front of me. Okay, please make an acrobatics check. I will. Uh, let's see. D20 plus 4. Roll. I rolled a 12. That will work. Yes, you are now on the roof. And then while I'm on the roof, I would like to uh, hurl a firebolt at cultist number three with advantage. Oh, yes, height advantage. Oh, yeah, it's high ground, right. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm not used to having the high ground on anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled Wait, 18 and a 20. Yeah, well, both oh, of them hit. So. Yeah. I think oh. you'll be right. <laughs> Let's just see the damage. It will be... Seven points of damage. The firebolt hits the cultist and causes quite a bit of damage, but the robes do not catch fire and he still remains standing. I just sigh in disappointment. <laughs> uh, now it is Stumble's turn. Quickly put my hand uh, into my robe and retract a dart, which I'm basically just going to lob at number three just to take him out, or at least try to anyway. Yep, and with advantage because of height. Oh, excellent. I got a 17 and a 25. That hits. Yippee, Yippee for dexterity. <laughs> All right, so that's the That's going to be... Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage? <laughs> I the... am the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> it is over. I have the high ground. <laughs> the cultist swings around as he hears you step on a roof tile mm -hmm. and looks up at you just as the dart embeds itself in his jugular. He goes down with a gurgle. The train and the S. And then meanwhile, cultist number two is going, I am, <laughs> number two's just sitting there going, I am running out of both friends and lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, it is. <laughs> with I that, regret it... many options. 
It is now... <laughs> it is now Lynanne's turn. And she just... sits there and gets the shield ready in front of her. Just waiting a turn, trying to stay out of danger. There it is now Namiya's turn. I hit oh, it. You hit it. <laughs> okay, roll for that. Wow. Damage. I rolled to hit, sorry, roll to hit. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Six. Nine. Never mind. Okay. It's still only nine. You bring your axe down and the cultist brings his scimitar up and does a fancy flourish which swings your axe out wide. I look you at him completely missed. <laughs> huh? I bring axe down, you not dead. What give? <laughs> the cultist uh, realizing who he's facing and even though he may have just deflected a blow uses his bonus action to disengage and runs at Lin-Ann. Is it his turn now? Yes. Uh, and that she had a bonus action you wish to use. Yeah. I was going to say, okay. if she's just waiting, could she use that to attack him as... Yes, up? she was preparing an attack. Ah. Was so when, he got, when he got in range, she was going to attack with her spear. Nifty. Well, that worked out. Yeah. All right. And unfortunately, she's not very good with melee, okay. and the spear goes wide. Oh dear. Have to give her some pointers sometime. <laughs> yes. Mm. And with that, the cultist now rolls to attack. Oh and no. He once again, just like his uh. Brother in belief, uh, the scimitar bounces off the shield that she has ready. Hmm. It is now... <laughs> it is now Ravain's turn. Okay, I'm gonna throw a firebolt at him. And I yep. rolled... 11 and 9 to hit, so 11. The firebolt hits the ground and fizzles out between his feet. So my turn? Uh, yes, now it is Stumble's turn. Okay. Um, I might just throw another dart. Mm -hmm. I did have a thought of jumping off the roof and going at him, but uh, there's no need for the fancy stuff. <laughs> uh, which is good, because with the advantage, I rolled a 12 and a nat 20. Roll for damage. Okay. The first nat 20 of the game. Yep. First okay. First yeah. Solid. So, uh, yep. That's going to be 14 points of damage. The uh, dart embeds itself in the back of his skull, and Lenan watches as his eyes just roll up into his head, and then he falls forward, bashing his forehead against her shield. That is the... I was going to say, just from the top of the rooftop, you hear me call going, Daddy, I didn't mean for him to fall that way. <laughs> <laughs> That is the end of that combat. Okay, I would like to climb down and very quickly gather up my uh, the darts that I threw. Plus, could I take one of the scimitars that they had? Uh, yes, yes, you can. As well, the uh, the short that I had was a nice uh, gift given to me. I would also wouldn't mind having my own weapon. While he is taking one of the scimitars, I would also like to take one from one of the other cultists. Yep, no problem. I want to look at robe. At the robe? Yeah. Yes, we should probably do that as well. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I want other, one of the others to look at the robe. <laughs> <laughs> because if I do it, it's going to be negative one. You just do to yell at you. Look at thing. Look at robe. And look for Fair paper. <laughs> okay. Uh, if someone is going to uh, inspect... The uniforms. Oh, pardon me. Of the I cultists. would probably recommend our wizard friend because yes. one, I have a plus zero to intelligence, and two, I don't really know anything about this particular land. May Fair I enough. Attempt an investigation.
investigation check to see yes. if I glean anything very well. Yes. I rolled a 13. Okay, you see that um, the robes are just brownish robes. Uh, they're light brown, but they do have dark brown patterns on them. And if you look really closely, you can see that uh, they do look like dragon heads breathing fire. But uh, these cultists don't really wear any adornments uh, other than uh, headpieces that uh, give them the looks of horns. It's almost, They almost look like what a dragonborn would look like that you've seen in the cities. Not a vote, but I suppose. <laughs> yep. I also just, also just look. Um, there's mm. a look of what seems to be anger on my face as I do it. Do they have any gold on them? Uh, luckily, uh, this was a group that had been pillaging. Um, for asking that question, you get to roll a d6. Oh, yeah. I just realized there was no point in me picking up the uh, scimitar because my weapon proficiency is a simple weapon and short sword. And scimitar is not simple. So oh. I'll get to tell it. I'm a Four? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, these cultists and kobold had 40 gold pieces worth of trinkets. Nice. So it's not 40 gold. No, yeah, but it is. 40 gold worth of miscellaneous trinkets. I will write that down because I can carry the most things. Fair. <laughs> you carry all the things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there uh, anything else you would like to do in this area? I believe. Um, would there be any other. I was going to say, would there be any other survivors in the area? Or are we working with the people with. Our cleric are the only one. I think yeah. that it's just like residential, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this is, yeah, it's like uh, what medieval towns always look like in the movies yeah. where there they were could just be a workshop to break into next to someone's house. So. Yeah, they, yeah, there could be a workshop next to a house or there could be ten houses. Because they used to have um, their businesses in their, their trades. No, nah, it just yeah. meant like if there are any like people still. So, uh, you can't see any people on the streets, but if you wish to search the houses, you can. Can we tell which house they were pillaging? Uh, you would need to roll a investigation check. Very well. But I also need to do that to check for people, or...? Oh, uh, yeah. well, well, my thinking was that if we check the house they were just pillaging, we could find if there was anyone in that house. That's where they most makes sense. Were. That makes sense. Unfortunately, I've only rolled an eight on that. Uh, uh well, yeah. I can, I can try. I guess I get a plus zero to it. Uh, I rolled a seven, so yeah, I'm no better. Yeah. Um. From where you're standing, you can't really see too far down the road. Um, the light's still a little bit dim, even with your dark vision. Uh, you can't see which house has been plundered. Oh dear. Wait, I want to try. Eh, <laughs> sure, why not? For a while. <laughs> no! That'd, that'd be, yeah. Be Still the same thing, you can't yeah. see either. <laughs> we don't see shit. <laughs> um, you can roll a perception check if you would like to see if you can hear any screaming. Or hear anything to... Oh man, I wish I'd done that. I would have done that first. <laughs> My wisdom, I get a plus zero, so our cat friend might be. I got a nineteen, so I get plus nice. five to mine. Oh, jeez. Um, you stand in the middle of the road and listen to try and see if you can hear anybody calling for help, and uh, no one. You don't hear any screams, but you you don't know whether it's because people have heard the recent fighting, so they're staying low in their houses, hoping that 
whoever won the fight doesn't come to search for them or uh, but, uh, yeah. whatever they're doing, they are hiding. I mm. walk to the nearest house in front of me. And okay, so that would be the one to the west. Yep. And I knock on the door. Maybe call out and let them know that the, the fighting is over. Yes. And I call at out. Least... I call out. If anyone's in there, it's safe to leave. We're coming to the keep. If you want to live, join us. You, uh... You wait 30 or so seconds, and there's no response from this house. However, two uh, common townsfolk leave from this house down here, and um, they come and join your party. Uh, this commoner token will depict yeah, how many there are, and I'm keeping yeah. a note how many there are, so. Hooray! Yeah. We do good. Yeah. Um, as they come back to you, they go, you might want to keep your voice down. Uh, everybody in this area left as soon as we heard fighting, uh, seeing as we are the closest to the entrance to the keep. Uh, we do not think... We thought that we might be able to uh, protect our home from a couple of bandits, you know, but we didn't uh, count on little lizard people who uh, can see better in the dark than us. That is fair. Mm. And, uh... But since you did remain here and you did get a good look at them, did you see who was commanding them? Any more of... Did you see the direction from which they came and through the... What, where did they come from? Uh, who was with them? Uh, we were having dinner at the time, but, uh, so we don't, we didn't see which area they came from. We only know that uh, they came from somewhere to the northwest. So we don't know whether they came from the north or the west or even the northwest directly, but we do know that that's the way that they came into this part of the city, or uh, the town, but, um, and we didn't see too much as as soon as we saw the as as soon as we saw the cult the, these people in fancy robes come through we uh, barricaded the door and stood back but um uh during that time during the time that we were barricading the door we saw people leaving and heading towards the keep um and we were standing there ready to defend just next to the door, but then we saw the little lizard people and decided it might be best if we hid a bit better than what we were doing. And then we heard that fight and then we heard you. But uh, one thing we did see is there was a person in purple uh, behind the front ranks when we saw them at the other end of the city. Uh, no, 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 uh, like I said, we were in having dinner, so we haven't actually left the house until now. Uh, although, come to think of it, we did hear a roar before. It was, uh, quite loud. Roar. Stay with us and do everything we say, not what they say. Well, the, the, seeing how you dealt with these people, aye, okay. Uh, whatever you say, just... Get us to the keep safe, please. I look at... I look at, uh, Namia and Stump. I ask them, so, what do we do now? To the keep? Or should we see if there's any more stragglers trying their luck? Mm -hmm. This is a good question. I don't know. Protect people. I protect the people. Of course, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I understand we must make haste to the keep, but it wouldn't hurt to quickly check just in case there are any more lying around. Yes. We shall.
continue towards the keep, but if we see any disturbances along the way, we'll do our best to intervene. Yep. Okay, so uh, are you following what Lenan uh, suggests again? Yep. We'll mm, okay. I think why not? And uh, she points you to the south again, saying it's a, it's a, it's a little less used road. So maybe we can get lucky, and there will be uh, no one in this area. And uh, how do you guys proceed? Stealthily, as per you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, run. I could try. I got a twenty-five for stealth. I rolled a fourteen okay. for stealth. Okay. Fourteen. Okay. Okay, you start to walk forward, and you make it to the shadows of these houses, which are, these are one of the few houses around here that aren't giving off light, and you see ahead of you A little bit closer than I was meaning to put this. You see another couple of cultists and kobolds, but they have not seen you. Shall we ambush them? You can, and just remember that if you wish Lenan to heal you, uh, you can ask her to. But she does have limited healing. I think I will take my chances. I want to climb up onto the uh, northernmost house that's directly in front of us. Okay, so. Roll an acrobatics check. And I got a 13 so. on the acrobatics check. Yep, that's a success. Yep, so up onto this one. Everyone else? Mm, I might stay on the ground for this one. Stand Just behind the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Nami, I would like to stand behind the tree. And stumbles. Mm. Yes, I see too many people went after the cleric last time, so I might stay just to run into deception. Yeah, okay. Well, Lenan was going to take the commoners to the side of the house and try to stay out of sight this fight. Fair enough. So, she has done that. Um, do you change what you do, or would you just like to stand to the left of her and guard this area? Mm. I might... Uh... Yeah, no, I could start off there. I'll just move forward if need be. Um, okay, well, if you guys are now going to attack, you get a round of surprise. Yep. And could you please roll initiative before we get to this? Six. Six for Ravane. Nineteen. Thirteen. Oh, nineteen. Wow. And what was Stumble, sorry? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, uh, Namia, you get to go first. I run in and hit. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't see what number that is. Uh, yeah, the first sorry. one. I can zoom in a little bit more. Uh, it's two kobolds yep. and two cultists. Yes. Uh, I'll hit a cultist. Hit the cultist, so you go here? Yeah. Okay. You rush forward and swing at the cultist. Please roll the hit. Thirteen. That is a hit. Please roll for damage. Plus five. Oh, six. Six. Still a decent hit on a cultist. You I'm got to eat him though. <laughs> Someday you will get the chance. We're here for a while. 
Uh, you swing your axe at the cultist and embed it in his arm, making his left arm useless. Uh, but he is still up and still poses a threat when and if he gets to his turn. <laughs> yeah, if. <laughs> stumbles, it is now your turn. All right, well, she's clearly dealing with that one, so I'm going to go and take a shot at uh, Cobalt number one, please. I just realised I probably should have said what the enemies were, but yes, they are Cobalt and Cobalt. Yeah, I could... <laughs> All right. Uh, so basically, nice quick run, and I rolled a 21 to hit. That is a hit. And that's going to be... Ooh. That's a full stick, so that's going to be 11 points of damage. Ooh, nice. Swing your sword, 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 and neatly decapitate the kobold. And as blood spurts from his neck, wrong. he falls over backwards. Anyone up uh, for a game of soccer? <laughs> maybe, maybe later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, it is now Lenan's turn, and she just she just uh, stays back and readies an attack op action. Fair enough. If anyone gets close enough, Lenan protect. Yeah. Uh, now it is Ravane's turn. I would like to shoot a fireball. Yep. Uh, 13 to hit. That is a hit. Please roll for damage. And just a reminder while he's rolling that the uh, Cobalt number one is definitely dead. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, that's what we're here for. I mean, he yeah. might not be. <laughs> Four points of damage. Four points of damage on cultist number two. The firebolt hits him in the arm and catches his sleeve alight, but he manages to grab a bit that is not burning and rip the sleeve off of his robe. Uh, he is still very much alive. That is the end of the surprise round, and now it is Namiya's turn again. Oh, yeah! I will hit the... Cultist? The cultist that's right in front of me. Fuck, yeah. Yep. <laughs> what I get? Ten. Ten. Ugh. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you swing your axe and the cultist just leans back slightly and oh. the axe misses him. Bummer. <laughs> Uh, it is now Stumble's turn. Okay, so she still find that one. Um, now I can. You are far me. enough away that you will not get hit. By the way. Yep. Uh, would I be able to get to Cobalt Number Two without any attacks of opportunity? Uh. I guess if he stands in the middle of the crossroad. Uh, yeah, well, if you stand here and don't if move... I, if, out if, if I stand there, in the middle, if I stand like the middle, would I be able to hit both? If you stand and cultists? here, you would be able to hit all of them, but you would be um, flanked. Yeah, you're opening yourself up to uh, that um, bad that time. Case, I, might just, I might just go for cultist number two then. Yep, no problem. Very magic throwing friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't try to steal kills from people, I just want to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be a 24 to hit. That is a hit. And that, again, is another stick. So that's going to be another 11. <laughs> you, quick as an arrow, stab your sword out and withdraw it. And there is only about an inch of blood on the end of the blade, but you know that this is enough to sever the jugular. And he goes down choking on his own blood. Very strong cat. <laughs> it's, it's precise. Good cat. <laughs> Good cat. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I can't uh, get to the other cobalt to hit, so that's 
gonna be. You can use your movement uh, again. You don't have to use it in just one turn. Yeah, you can. Oh. Move Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that is so. Fantastic. Yeah, well, you can move. I will 10 move feet. to cobalt. Yeah, I will move to cobalt number two and go for just an unarmed strike. However, I will uh, put my claws out this time just to yep. have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay, so uh, you do need to roll. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be. Is it fifteen plus seven? Twenty-two. That is a hit. Okay, and uh, how do you roll damage for unarmed? That's one that that's I keep getting. Four plus dex. Yep. Yeah. That's gonna be. That's just gonna be. It's gonna be a seven. You seven damage. Once again, quick as an arrow, flash out, and you, as you pull back, you have one of his eyes oh my God, in your he, hand. He punched the cobalt to death. <laughs> and the cobalt <laughs> just cobalt there, yeah, just yeah. Okay. Ah. <laughs> the cobalt has enough time to register that it can't see out of one eye before it falls over and oh, dies. Damn it! Why didn't I start with a monk character? This is nuts. <laughs> I already love my happy kitty. <laughs> uh, it is now Ravain's turn. Feisty little cat. Oh, oh, sorry. No, it's Lenan's turn, and she yeah. readies a spell as a reaction. Then it's Cultist's turn. Sorry. Yep, because the kobold died, I just went straight down the... Fair enough. Yeah, so now it's actually the Cultist's turn. And uh, fearing for his life, he just swings out and hopes that he hits. <laughs> oh, poor buddy. And the Skivitar just... Bounces off the armor that Namir is wearing, <laughs> leaving oh, yeah. no damage whatsoever. It just looks no. up at you and goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's Ravain's turn. I shout, oh. I shout through gritted teeth and then fling a fireball <laughs> at him. And that's I'm beginning to suspect you might have issues with this. 21 <laughs> to hit. Oh dear. That is a hit. That boy's gonna cop it. Damage that is a seven. Fire your fireball and it hits him in the face, burning off half of his face and cooking the brain behind the skull. He falls over without even having had the chance to scream. Hey, if if if, if I can't hit, at least I can. Be a sponge. <laughs> That's what you're there for. Okay, you, you got to flatten that one guy's skull. That was awesome. Yeah. You will have time for more more horrible, violent rampages later. Yeah, if I actually hit. <laughs> I, I would definitely suggest using your own dice. <laughs> As I walk yeah. past the cultist, I smile appreciatively at his burning face. <laughs> <laughs> You got issues, man. It is a strange custom. Is this normally how mages are around here? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> I simply. I will consider this. I simply look over at mm -hmm. who stumbles and I say, "Yes, some revel in the destruction and the fight. Myself, I am enjoying." Hmm. Interesting. Okay, what would you guys like to do now that this battle is over? They're corpses. Yeah. Just the same. Yeah. I suggest uh, loot. Banning out Operation of Loot and Look. Yeah, while you guys loot, I would like to approach the. Oh, I'm happy to go and look. Like Should we be looting people's houses? Yeah, no, no, no. no, no, no talking no, about no, looting no, the okay, cultists, cool. cultists, cultist, not the not the innocent people's houses. Okay, so, I was kind of confused. If, no, if Namia, I was gonna say Namia, if you want to like check these guys over, we'll go and look very quickly for any other yeah. survivors. Okay. I head to the nearest house. Let me get my perception. Roll on. 
that to Bloody Irish. I got a 19 for perception. Um, it is... You don't hear anything in this vicinity. Okay. Well, I'm just going to head to the house that you have highlighted there. And I'm yep. going to knock on the door and... Not shouting, but speaking loud enough that anyone on the other side of the door could hear me. I say, coast is clear. If you're looking to get to the keep, now's your chance. As you knock on the door, the door actually opens slightly. And inside you can see that everything was taken, but not forcefully. Hmm. So... He must have already abandoned. gone. Yeah, yes, this one is more abandoned than looted. looted. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, well, if no one else is around... Did they leave anything? That would need an investigation check. Hey, but would rather we not loot the innocent people's house? Mm-hmm. This one's abandoned. Oh, I no, would just roll an investigation check. Okay. Um, in this house, uh, the dust covers the majority of the house, except for maybe a 10 foot square in front of the door, as if someone has come in, had a quick look inside the door, noticed that there's nothing there and walked out. Um, you don't find anything useful until you go through what you presume to be a bedroom that still has a set of drawers in there and go through the drawers and inside you find a ticket uh, worth 1d3 gold. So roll a d3. Uh, you find a trinket worth 30 gold. Lovely. I'll put it in my, mm. in my cloak. Leave the house and carefully shut the door behind me. Interesting. Is anyone else doing anything? No, I think we're good for the time being. Anyone? Okay. Gesture to Lenard, to the keep. Check the cultists, do Ah, uh, yes, if you want to check the cultist, roll an investigation. <laughs> uh, where's my investigation? Yeah, it is intelligence, so it's negative one. Um, just a sec. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go, I got 18. Unfortunately... This is one of the groups that had not managed to loot anything yet. Damn it, the one time I roll it! (laughs) However, you do find the scimitars from the um, cultists. um, Do I I just put them in my bag or something? If you wish to take them, you can. Are they worth anything? Um, Um... There might, after this whole disaster is over, there might be a blacksmith that would want to buy old weapons to maybe reforge them or something. Yeah, okay. Well, you well never know what could be useful. So what was it? Just two scimitars? Yeah, two scimitars and a, a dagger two. from one of the kobolds. Nothing else on these. All right. Okay. Uh, and you, uh, you're holding the other thing, aren't you, hmm? Dale? Oh, the other two. Yes, oh. I've got a trick. I have. Yeah, I... yeah, that's yours. I'm just trying to keep track of. Okay, I, I have a scimitar if you want it, because my one's actually useless to me. Oh, it depends if you want to. Oh, uh... I, might have, I don't have proficiency with it, so. May as well give it to her. I, I intend on keeping mine, yep. so I'm going to get proficiency soon. All right. You. Yep. So I'll write that down. There we go. Okay. I think I'm just going to use two text thingy. 
Okay. I'm not used to doing it on the computer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm all good. Nor was M2, and now he's made a bunch of characters on the computer. I love her, right? It is my friend. <laughs> okay, um, from where you are now, there is only one way to the keep. Ah, yep. Along this road. Yep, straight down. Yep. Um, from where you are, you do see that there is another crossroads. And going by your previous experience, you it would be... Prudent to expect an attack yeah, at the crossroads. Are we stealthing? So, would you like to stealth? Yeah. Would you like to heal? Uh, that was a 12 on my stealth. Okay. Two. Yep. Damn, why did we see that happening? Plus two. Six! Okay. Well, yay me. <laughs> Okay, uh, are you guys, some of you more stealthily than the rest, <laughs> walk up the street. We'll just say that, and... that she's too tired to, to be stealthy <laughs> effectively. Yes, Even at about the this time. the can't conceal her. At this time, it is approximately 9.45, 9.50. So you, you have been on the road for quite a while. Considering you got up early morning to travel with the merchant, who I should mention now stayed back on the road. <laughs> um, you get to the crossroads and notice no one on the crossroads. But as you get to the houses further up, you do notice... Did not work. Why did that not work? There we go. I can just imagine uh, the tabaxi being like, go over there, you big stupid thing. <laughs> like gesturing me to go hide behind a house. No, I, I would not say that about the sound companions. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep, uh, enough of I you I mean, passed, eventually, but... maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> Enough of you passed that it was a group pass. <laughs> so you make it to the crossroads and you notice a rather large group of enemies. Uh, they're all facing the keep. So they have not seen you. <laughs> um, so you have time to position yourselves. You do have time to heal if you wish. Man, I wish I had stealth attack. I'm okay. going to stay exactly where I am. Yep. So mm. I'm waiting for everyone else to finish positioning. Actually, no, I'm... I will climb up onto I will climb up onto the large house just behind us. So the one that the commune is kind of on? Yeah. And I rolled a thirteen on my acrobatics. Yep, that's enough to pass. Mm. So up there. Um, the commoners at Linan's urging go behind the house to the south of the street. Good. And Linan just stands in front of the building. Uh, quick question. There's the one cobalt, or well, is that the different type of Ooh. cobalt that's on top uh, of the roof? You notice that there's five kobolds, three cultists, using a different token, because I realised yes. I was using the wrong token, and yes. a winged kobold sitting on the roof. Okay. Winged kobold. Okay, quick question. Yes. If I were to try and climb up onto the roof with the winged kobold, would I need acrobatics or stealth? You would need no, it wouldn't both. Me. You would need stealth to remain unnoticed and acrobatics to actually succeed in climbing. Well, fair enough. Um, all right, so that's... A... If it tried to... Sorry. No, that's fine. It's fine. Ask your question. Uh, if it tried to fly past me, could I smack it? Or bad style. <laughs> <laughs> if it left your... Like, if you uh, got an attack of opportunity, so if it left your combat zone, ah. yes. Okay. Okay, I got a 20, not nat, for acrobatics. Yep. And a 17 for stealth. Okay. Um, I just thought I'd ask. 
Yep. Um, unless I don't unless support. you set up an attack, like if you used your turn to uh, ready your action, and you said that if the kobold flies at me, I try to hit it. Ah. No, I mean if then, it flies over me, like to get to someone else. Yeah, that would be. If yeah, well, then it would uh, leave your it would leave your uh, area of ownership. And then, yes, you would get an attack of opportunity at it. Okay, I was just thought I would ask because I'm tall. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> logic. Sound logic. Yeah. yeah. That is actually very sad logic, yep. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I will now see if the winged kobold notices you, and uh, you got a pretty good chance that it won't. Yeah. What was your spell? Uh, 17. Okay. And by winged Kobold, it doesn't literally have have wings. It's more like winged as in the context of like wings and stuff. It can fly. It can fly. Oh. Holy shit. I yes. Oh, it does have wings. No, okay. yes. No, no yes. Uh, actually... Winged Kobolds can fly. They're called Erds. Oh. But um, the Monster Manual calls them Winged Kobolds. Yeah. Stupid mm-hmm. Erd. <laughs> Come Erd. Go squish now. Mm-hmm. Okay, you climb, Ruth. <laughs> you climb the roof and you have no way of knowing if the winged kobold has actually noticed you or not. But it doesn't attack you immediately, so you take that as a good sign. Okay, great, lovely, I guess. Yep. Okay, Namia, uh, what would you... Oh, pardon me. What would you actually like to do? Well, I guess stand behind the building. <laughs> the one that stumbles is on, or the one um, directly next to you? The one directly next to me. I think they're uh, all pretty within range. Yes, yeah, they're definitely within your running range. Yeah. Alright. Okay, if you guys are going to try and initiate combat, then please roll initiative. Very well. Well, we're sure they're bad guys, yeah? Uh, pretty darn. They're, they're, the cultists are dressed the same as the other cultists. Yeah. The kobolds look the exact same. Yes. Uh, right. 22. 22. 22. Eleven. Loving, loving this plus five to initiative. <laughs> Did you say 11, Namia? Yeah. Okay. Yes, welcome to the plus five dex club. It's so nice. I be- <laughs> <laughs> Throw the winged kobold off the building. Do it. <laughs> Oh my god, could I actually, yeah, try to throw it at... Hmm. Actually, I suppose I'm trying to throw it that at... Would that would be strength. Would probably great. Yeah, no, not not so great. Yeah. You could be attempting um, to grapple him. You can actually grapple using acrobatics. Can you? Oh! Grapple yes. Why did I know this? I could have squished it's so many up to the. It's up to the DM. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Okay, well, what does the DM think then? Mm-hmm. I would allow acrobatics. You can try if you want, and luckily enough, Stumbles goes first. Well, hooray. Do, do we want me to try and, like, lob him off the building at you guys, towards you guys? Sure. Uh, everyone fine with this? Because that was just yeah, a... get some damage on him in either case. Now, that would count as an action, right? Yes, you're trying to. Okay, well, in that case, I'd like to use my bonus action to use an unironed strike at him. So you're going to hit him first, then try to grapple him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yep. Oh, wait, I have okay. a question. Yep. yep. If he didn't hit him first, would that give him an advantage on the grapple? Mm, I don't if he was no. like, behind it? No, because this is a surprise round. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, well, I'm, I'm glad I decided to do that as a bonus section because that's a net 20 to, to hit this guy. Okay. Yay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Good. I wish I could have rolled higher than a two, mm-hmm. but that's still fine because that two plus five and double the fourteen points of damage. And then, if he's still alive, I will go to try and lob him off the roof. You sneak up behind him and very quietly and very slowly. Uh, get into position and then you pounce and grab his head with both your claws and twist. Oh. Snapping his neck. 
Oh, Kitty and likes the, the birdie. And the <laughs> body goes limp. Can I throw him anyway? You still have an action, so yes, now it will just be a ranged attack. Yes, down into the crowd. Oh, just, yeah, actually, yeah, that's even better. Can I... Did I love him at? Uh, how about uh, cultist number one? I'll just throw him at cultist number one if his neck's broken and he's dead. Sure. Initiate. Hit uh, a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's Not recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it counts. This would be an improvised weapon, wouldn't it? Yes. 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 That's, just like uh, one, that's 1d4, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, impossibly. And okay, well... I don't think, well, no. it doesn't really matter either way, because that's uh, 17 plus 5, so that's, uh, yeah, 20. That 20. definitely hits Colter's number one, yep. Fun. So he's just sitting there going, huh, I wonder how our bunny on the roof is doing, and he's going to take so just 1d4 with nothing added to it. Or do I add dex? Oh, will that be dex or strength? Oh, solid. Well, in that case, that's going to be 9 points of damage as I fling this broken, this poor winged broken neck cobalt just off the fucking roof. <laughs> the, <laughs> the limp body of the cobalt flies at cultist number one and the sixth sense of the cultist makes him turn around and he has just enough time for his eyes to go right before he is crushed by the winged cobalt's Ooh, body. Killed him. He's <laughs> dead. <laughs> He was squishy. <laughs> the winged kobold's body hit him and broke his ribs, oh, crushing wow. his chest. Puncturing his oh. lungs. And with that, it is now Ravain's turn. I reach into <laughs> my robes and I pull out what appears to be a gnarled, twisted little piece of wood in my wand. Oh. I point it at the crowd of enemies oh. and I shout, Somnus! Casting sleep. Ooh. So I get okay. I was going to say, just have this whole thing after doing all this, just turn back to the group, just give them a thumbs up. It's like, <laughs> this cat is just brutally snapped. How am I not a rogue? <laughs> 5v8, the total is how many hit points? Creature can affect. Creature is in 20. That is 20. 20 feet. What? Oh. 20, 27, did you say? Yep. Okay. I think it goes enemies with highest HP first. Uh, cultist number two and three, and Kobold number one all fall asleep. Lovely, leaving just two, four, and five. They go nine, and eight. three. And so two, three, four, five. Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. Um. That was your action. Do you want to do a bonus action or anything? Nope, I'm done. Okay. Uh... Ooh, pardon me. Uh, Linan taking her surprise action. Uh, casts um, Sacred Flame on Kobold number two. Actually, no, she casts them on Kobold number one, and Kobold number one, being asleep, can't make a dexterity save. No. So it takes... Oh, dear. Unfortunately, only takes one damage, but it oh. wakes... And it wakes up because of that. Yeah. Oh. Unfortunately. Damn it, Lanann. <laughs> it seems that Shantae is not uh, looking favorably upon her at the moment. No. Oh, but points for trying. Points for trying. Uh, now it is Nami's turn. Uh, I'll go hit cultist number one. Uh, not cultist number one. Uh, Cobalt number one? Yes. Yeah. You run around the house and uh, appear next to Cobalt number one. And I... Roll that. 18. That is a hit. Please roll for damage. Twelve. The kobold 
uh, waking up from its very brief sleep, scratching its skin from the uh, irritation of the radiant damage that hit it just before, looks up bleary-eyed just in time to see the axe hit him <laughs> and smush him into the ground. <laughs> oh, oh, just panicked. Just railroads like him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no, <laughs> You go back to sleep now. <laughs> uh, did you want to do anything else? Um, I don't you think I really can except for move. Yeah. And there's no yeah, real right. point in moving. Fair enough. Uh, and with that, that surprise round is over, and now it is Stumble's turn again. God, what's he gonna do now? I'd like to at least get one of those sleeping cultists alive after this so we can interrogate them. Okay, so which cultists are asleep? Both of them. Uh, both of them. Uh, okay, in that case, I will not attack one of those. I will ask, though, um, what would I need to roll to jump off the roof and then hit Cobalt number five? <gasps> You can assassinate them, like... Flying, jump yeah, oh, oh, yeah, proper, yeah, proper just jump from the roof with, like, sword in both hands. <laughs> uh, acrobatics. Okay. Yeah, just acrobatics uh, and to hit. Does an 18 work for acrobatics? Yes, it does. And now okay. roll to hit. And to hit is going to be... I really should remember how to do this. Uh, plus seven. 16 to hit. That is a hit. Roll for damage. You're having fun with this, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, that's going to be uh, seven points of damage on Cobalt number five. Dumbles runs forward and leaps off the building without a sound. Lands on Cobalt number five, pushes him to the ground and pierces his spine with your sword. He never stood a chance. <laughs> Great time right now. Loving this so far. <laughs> My luck will run out eventually, but it shall not be this day. Uh, you oh, are taking... From where you are, you are next to Cobalt number four. I just... I, so I can hit number four. Oh, screw yes, it. I mean, you I, can, might you well, I might as well fucking hit him. That's <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> Roll your damage. Hey, Jesus. Oh, this is almost unfair at this point. I'm so sorry. Um, that's going to be 12 points of damage. I did roll a 1 for the damage, but, you know, plus 5 and then double. That's, that's 12. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. As you oh. jump off the roof, you do a somersault, land on Cobalt number 5, pushing your sword through his spine and as he goes down you let go of your sword reach up with both hands and snap kobold number four's neck <laughs> Christ <laughs> I don't want to brag but I do feel the need to just go so what's everyone's kill can at no <laughs> way don't tell me I'm winning <laughs> it's not a contest but if it was I win <laughs> now revenge oh. turn Nomia oh, is God. impressed by a little cat. <laughs> I would like so much. to hurl a firebolt at Cobalt 3, and I rolled uh, let's see, D20. With advantage? Yep, with advantage. Uh, uh, 19 to hit. That is a hit. Alright, and for damage, that is 6. Okay, the firebolt flies at the kobold and hits him in the foot. And what seems like it wouldn't deal too much damage is quickly banished from your mind as the grass around him catches light and he quickly burns to death. Lovely. Uh, anything else you would like to do with your turn? Nope, that is my turn done. Okay, uh, right, now, sleep. Um, at, yep, and do they need to make a... No, they're just asleep. They're just asleep for one minute. So. They're, they're just asleep, okay. Uh, both, cult, both cultists miss their turn. Uh, Cobalt number three is dead, so I need to remove his. Uh, and now it is... 
Crab World number two's turn. Ooh, pardon me. And he notices that in the span of about 30 seconds, his entire team is dead. <laughs> and looking for leadership runs towards cultist number two uh, and wakes cultist number two up for whatever good it's do for him. That's very, very much, oh, sweet Jesus, we're all going to die. Please help me. <laughs> Cultist number three. Yep. Cultist sneak number three needs to stay asleep at all no. costs. Don't worry, they have to literally get past me to get to him and <laughs> see how good I'm doing right now. Just <laughs> <laughs> this like adorable freaking cat person just currently covered in broken <laughs> just with like two broken necks and just a little bit of blood from where he's been violently jumping on people. <laughs> uh, it is now Lenan's turn and she looks on in slight amazement at what you guys have managed to do and just raises her hand and once again tries to cast Sacred Flame, this time on Kobold number two. Ah, uh, she's trying her best. And Kobold number two failed his dexterity save. Hooray! There you go. And this time, Lenan got a six on her damage. And the kobold starts to glow as Lenan starts praying. And he convulses and then falls over with a look of pain on his face. His last act was to make sure someone got to witness that. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Namia, it's now your turn. <laughs> Who's left? Uh, uh, cultist number three. two is awake. Yes. Cultist number three is asleep. I will go get number two. Okay. Roll two hits then, please. Put that massive You're not the boss of me. Take him down. Hmm. Uh, 1d20. 12. You just hit him. What is your damage? Twelve. You bring the axe in from the right and hit him in the neck, severing all but maybe an inch of skin. And he had enough he had enough time to utter, the fuck is happening? Before it <laughs> cuts off. Oh. <laughs> well then. Uh, just a casual massacre. Love just turn around and uh, look back and wave over to our uh, wizard friend going, uh, we still have one left for you to talk to. Hmm? Keep him. I, I say as I, I was say, I say as I uh, take the sword out of the other guy, the cobalt that I landed on before. As I climb down off the roof, I point, raise my hand, I point to the sleeping one, and I say, "Bind him, remove his weapons." Fair enough. Uh, okay. I will, uh, uh, get out some rope. I do have rope on me, and uh, tie him up and take his things. Yep. You tie him up, take his things. Uh, he's still asleep. <clears throat> uh, will you wake him up and question him here, or will you take him just up the hill to the keep? Can we wake him up with a slap? I think we will keep him here, and I stand over him, and I pull out my short sword, and to wake him up, I slam it down on his left hand, slicing off one of his fingers. Mm. Damn! The cultist takes two points of damage, but wakes up screaming. I quickly reach over and place my short, the blade of my short sword at his neck, and then I lean in and I whisper, Your robes. Tell me, is it the cult of the dragon? Yeah. Yeah, yes, 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 please don't hurt me. Yes, yes, we are the cult of the dragon. Why did you 
attack this town. We, we, we just give me a second, please. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, need to find the uh, correct thing I would expect. Uh, please roll oh, a intimidation check. I was going to say, would he get advantage considering he's taken a Considering he's of just taken a couple of fingers off? Yes. <laughs> I'd say he's earned that one. <laughs> Uh, that was a 21 and a 22. Christ, oh, man. <laughs> what is your intimidation at? Uh, uh, I don't have proficiency in it, but I get a plus three from my charisma. Uh, so well, just... that'll do it. I have mm -hmm. proficiency. Uh, it was a success anyway. Yeah, I, think, I, think he, I think the guy who just severed the fingers got this. Yeah. The social skill I have is persuasion. <laughs> Interesting. Um... Oh, yeah. Uh, don't actually have any talking. Uh, yes, yes, we, we, we the cult of the dragon, and we're collecting loot for the great horde that will usher in the reign of the queen of dragons. One more question. It... You've been very kind. Where is your camp? Uh... He, after a few seconds of sobbing, he looks up at your face again, and um, he tells you uh, a rough description of where the camp is. He tells you that the camp is uh, in the hollow of a rocky plateau that's shaped roughly like a horseshoe. Um, he he doesn't know exactly where it is, as he is just a low-level cultist. Um, finds it just fine on our own. Thank you. You've been very helpful. I smile at him, and then I slit his throat. Right. Okay. Uh, he dies, yep. as most people do when their throat gets slit. Um, okay. Most. <laughs> Most. <laughs> I mean, it's just one way to deal with the problem. May I attempt a religion check to determine who the Queen of Dragons is? Ah, uh, yes. Very well. That is the 14. Pardon me. Um... You remember from your studies in magic that most spells related to a draconic origin uh, always uh, mention Tiamat. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, is that the Queen of Dragons this yeah, is talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just didn't realize yeah, we'd get to this part that quick. the uh, Goddess of Dragons. Queen yes, of oh, Dragons. that's right. Yes, Goddess of Dragons, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, as Tiamat, yeah. the uh, multi-headed dragon queen. Yes, that's Tiamat. Um, yes. I yep. look at the others and I smile and say, Well, that was enlightening. Let us head to the keep so we can start restoring order in this town. <laughs> this has been an exciting time as it is. <laughs> Uh, do you want to do anything with the current battlefield that you have just left bodies? I mean, upon? I've kind of done my part. If you guys want to loot, go ahead. Go look for gold. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, if someone would like to look for gold, roll an investigation. Preferably someone that's not me. <laughs> oh, fine. I'll look for gold. Okay. Let's see. 17. Okay. Luckily enough, this was a group that had uh, done some raiding at the start of the initial raid. Please roll a d6. Alright, a d6 is being rolled. 
Uh, and you find 20 gold pieces worth of miscellaneous trinkets. Okay, so we'll put okay. that up. Yes, so I, to I take them and I hand them over to Nam. Alright. And I shall add them to my bag. Um, as well as you find another three scimitars, if you wish to take three? them. I shall take, I shall take the three scimitars. The trinkets. Okay. So, Ravain gets the scimitars and Namia gets the trinkets. Fair enough. Yep. Um, okay, you guys would like to head to the castle? Uh, to the keep? Yep. Might as well. Okay, that is actually the end of this map. So, Dale, you would like to put the artwork back up? Sure can. And that means I can stop streaming, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, you walk up to the gate, and luckily enough, there were guards keeping eyes on that group of enemies, as it was <laughs> one of the uh, increasingly more common groups coming to encircle the keep to try and stop people leaving. Or getting in, um, they see they saw the uh, impressive display that you just uh, displayed, and without even asking who you are, they raise the door inside the um, portcullis and allow you to enter. However, as soon as you enter, you are surrounded by guards. Just they're not threatening. But they are standing with weapons ready. And yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> a shield dwarf. I'm just getting to the right. Uh, an older shield dwarf man uh, walks forward. And he has uh, tangled bright red hair. And he goes, Sorvin! Who might I be thinking for taking out that group of enemies, and uh, what be your business? I step forward and say, I am Ravain. This is Stumbles, and this is Namia. We were here to... We were just passing through, escorting a caravan. Uh, we saw the uh, disorder that was underway, and thought it was the right thing to do. Order. Well, for that, I thank you. And, uh, would that be Lanan standing there behind you? With a... Oh, and is that your brother, Lanan? And, um, she responds in the affirmative, and the commoners step forward and quickly tell him what has happened and that you basically saved them and brought them here safely. And he turns to you and goes, Well, uh, if you're helping the commoners, I don't see why we're standing here at Sword Point. Uh, well, you lot, get back to the walls and watch those damned enemies that keep coming in. And, uh, you lot, come with me. We'll, uh, go to the main hall and I'll, uh, introduce you to the governor, as I'm sure he'll want to speak with you. Uh, do any of you have any questions before you start following him? Nope. Uh, just one. Yeah, no. When we came into town, we saw a shadow flying overhead. I gleaned from uh, one of the attackers that these brigands are in service to the cult of the dragon. Have any of your men spotted a dragon in the vicinity? Any of my men spotted a dragon? Fucking hell, we've been watching it since midday. The fucking great big beast he's been attacking every now and then. Lovely. Fucking big bastard it is too. It's fucking blue. Dragon. Well, we shall have to decide how to deal with that. I think it is beyond our current capabilities. Let's take it head on. Lead on, I say. Well, if you'd follow me, then. 
And uh, he leads you into the keep itself. And uh, through a couple of doors that and hallways that look like they've been designed specifically to keep people out during an attack. And you enter not a massive great hall, but it's still fairly big. And he says, please take a seat on one of the benches. Uh, I'll go get the governor and uh, inform him of uh, what you've told me. And he will be down presently, if you don't mind. Will I fit in this seat? They're big wooden benches, so... Yeah, I think you fit well enough. Uh, do I have <laughs> enough room? I was going to say, do I have enough room that I can lie down while we wait? <laughs> uh, yes, there is a hearth at the end of the building, so with yeah, a rug. So. I, say, I, take, I take my bag and I uh, sort of lie down and close my eyes for a quick nap while they're uh, getting <laughs> things organised. <laughs> Take a, I, I take a pouch out of my cloak, place it on the table, and open it up and begin rolling a cigarette out of tobacco and paper within. And then when it's done, I light it and place it in my mouth. I think about patting the kitty. Lunan, <laughs> <laughs> um, while you all do your various things, Lunan goes... Uh, she had stayed behind when you initially followed, but then um, she comes into the uh, room by herself. Her brother, uh, nephews and nieces, and the other two commoners seem to have stayed behind somewhere, possibly to go to the other refugees. And she just takes a seat to the side while you wait. Um, about five minutes passed, and then a man of roughly, a human male of roughly 60 years uh, enters the room, and um, immediately you can tell that this man is quite probably important, as he's wearing uh, a light blue tonic although it is ripped in some places and stained with his own blood. You see that the right side of his face and head are bandaged and his right arm hangs in a sling. Uh, it seems that this is a governor that doesn't just tell his people what to do. He gets involved. And he goes... Oh, hello there. Um, that's the same voice. Um, ah, hello. Uh, you must be the caravan guards that's helped my people. Um, I don't know how I can thank you, but I'm afraid that thank yous will have to wait until after this crisis is over. Um, may I ask what you are doing here? the tabaxi and I say cannot speak for my companions they may have reasons of their own oh sorry dad um okay does anyone else say anything someone no. might have to wake me up first yeah. <laughs> look the cat yeah yeah Amy, cat wait, the kitty <laughs> What? No, 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 not. What, what, what did I. Ah, yeah. I look over <laughs> as he wakes up bleary eyed and I say, You seemed awfully eager to get to Greenus back at the caravan. The fine governor here has asked us what our business in town is. Why would you go ahead and indulge him? It is not much of a long story. You see, I only recently arrived in this thought court. And a man I once travelled with for the past year suggested that this would be an excellent point to start discovering my way through this land. I was lucky enough to hit a ride with this blood. 
Mostly because I wanted a free nap. Mm. Not a <laughs> long one, but still, still. Mm. He looks at you and um, he goes, Well, I don't see anything sinister in your intentions to be here. No, well, while you are here and while you're in this keep, uh, could I ask you a favor of helping us repel this attack? And, uh... Hang on. Hmm? I shrug uh, well, and I say it would be my pleasure. Well then... Yeah. <laughs> well then, uh... With that, uh, I know you've just been through a rough ordeal to get here. Well, take... We seem to be in a lull at the moment. Take an hour. Uh, see the healers in, out in the courtyard and get yourself patched up. And uh, once you're patched up, get the Castellan, the uh, lovely uh, dwarf, uh, who seems to be a bit fired up right now, and personally I can't blame him. Uh, get him to point you in the right direction to come find me at the top of the keep, and we shall talk there. Well, now I stand good, and I immediately put my head back down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, he walks out, leaves you in the room alone with Lenan, and that is the end of this session. Lovely. Right. Oh, really? You have successfully made it to the keep, kept everyone alive, and beat everybody that you come across. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> nice. Ah, well done, well played. Hooray. So, yes, uh, that is the end of the session, and as a bonus, you all made it to level two. Level oh, two? So it's solid. Oh. And we get a short rest. Well, uh, no, seeing the healers actually counts as a, la as a long rest because they have oh. uh, potions Me. and... I enjoy the fact that I don't have any spells to cast. <laughs> oh, will, I'm basically just taking a literal cat nap. Yeah, you go get healed up, I take nap now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Uh, this counts as a long rest. You get to level two and next session in two weeks time on the 8th of the 12th, we shall pick up with you uh, chatting to Lanan, I believe. Yes, and discovering what, and trying to think of a way to defend this town from the dragon. Yes, um, yeah, I believe good. that the governor and the Castellan would actually have a few good ideas on that. <laughs> so, well, that was an enjoyable yeah. session and a fantastic yes. first episode of the stream. Everything seemed to have worked perfectly, and I really yeah. enjoyed that. I hope everyone that was it. well done. So, yes, I thoroughly enjoyed running that one. So, thank yes, you very well, much. Well, played, sir. well done, sir. <laughs> <laughs> be sure to join us again next week on Thursday when we shall be beginning the start of my next campaign, Waterdeep Dragon Heights. Yes, Just all the dragons. <laughs> yes, all the dragons. Make sure you fuel that spirit of adventure and don't lose too much sand. Bye. <laughs>